Yes. Yes. Just say a few words so, uh, so that I can hear you. Hello, sir. Am Hello. I audible? Yes. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah you are audible. Okay. Just a minute. If I'm also audible to you. Yes. And now I'm going live. Yeah. Just a minute. Sure. So we are live now. Yes. Good evening, everyone. And forum to enjoy the English language and RS Mule Dharampet Arts and Commerce College welcome you to this BCom English semester one online lecture series. And friends, today we have with us a very excellent and multifaceted personality, Dr. Praveen Joshi with us. He's an excellent teacher, no doubt, interested in language and literature. But let me tell you that he is interested in life. He takes interest in each and everything in life. He loves nature. He loves poetry. He loves music. He loves helping people. He's a social human being. Basically, he lives life king size. He is interested in each and everything in life. And therefore, uh, you know, uh, every if you uh, are his friend on Facebook, you will realize that every day he's so expressive about each and everything. You can be expressive only when you take interest in each and everything in life. And now I would introduce you to his academic achievements. Dr. Praveen Joshi is an MA, BA, MA, MED, MPhil, LLB, and a PhD. He was the head of the department and vice principal of DRB Sindhu Mahavidyala in Nagpur. Presently, he's the director of Prerna College of Commerce, Nagpur. He was the, uh, he's the president of the Forum for Creative Writers in English. He was the member of Board of Studies, Nagpur University. He's a member of Research Publication Committee, Nagpur University. He's the editor of Dewdrops, a literary journal. He's the editor of English textbook, Nagpur University. He's the editor of Prerna International Research Journal. He's on the editorial board. He's the member of the editorial board of Langlet International Research Journal. He's the advisor for creative books, New Delhi. He's the editor of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, 125th birth anniversary souvenir published by Nagpur University. He is the president of the Nagpur Youth Cultural and Social Forum. He's a research supervisor in English, Nagpur University. He has authored three books and he has published 60 research papers at national and international level. He has delivered 250 talks in different colleges and universities. He has attended 60 conferences and he has been honored with Bharat Shiksha Ratna Award, Social Amity Award and Educational Excellence Award. So friends, indeed, we are fortunate to have such a great personality amidst us here today. So without wasting any more time, let me ask Dr. Praveen Joshi to take uh, to take us to our new lesson today, which is the monkey's paw. It's, an, it's a very interesting lesson and to learn it from Dr. Praveen Joshi is going to be a, a real treat for us. So over to Dr. Praveen Joshi. Thank you, madam. Whether I deserve the kind words 
we have used for me, I don't know. But that, of course, increases my responsibility to be to reach that level. Yes, and do you want me to share the French we are going to? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So you can start and then I'll uh, share. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Today we are going to study a lesson that is the monkey's paw. Imagine the relevance of this story even in the present context. It was written in 1902. And after that, it was translated in many languages. Many plays were framed after that. It has been presented in various forms. Sir, Suru Dhalen. Suru Dhalen. Suru Dhalen. Lead. To how the things which are not distinct to be given to him. This monkey spawn has a symbolic significance. Stands for human greed and loss of faith in destiny, in faith, in God, in divinity, in providence. It is the human desire which is boundless and which always wants more and more. We are never, never satisfied with whatever little we have. Whatever the fate has given to us, we are not satisfied with that. And therefore, it occurs that our greed overpower, overpowers us and then we fall prey to our greed. There is a universal law that operates and that law is whenever you get something which is not in your destiny, it will always be entailed with some kind of sorrow. For example, somebody does not have a car and he steals somebody's car. So that happiness of stealing will be there, but it will be transitory. It will be momentary. And after that, the act of stealing the car will be entailed with a kind of punishment. So greed is always entailed with some kind of punishment. See the examples of various people around you who are greedy. In some way or other way, they are punished by God. Because out of greed, they have tried to acquire what is not meant for them, what is not kept for them by the divinity. This is a summary. In short, what is the summary? An old friend visit the house. Uh, sorry, uh, an old friend visit the White family. White is the name of the of that family, the title of the family. There are three persons in that family: Mr. White, Mrs. White, and their son Hobbit. That friend, Sergeant Major Morris, he comes to visit them. He has a monkey's paw, which has got a kind of magic. And through that magic, it can 
fulfill the wishes of the holder of the trust. When the friend comes to that family, when the friend comes to the whites, he says that the paw can grant wishes, maximum three wishes. But he wants the family not to take the monkey's paw because it will be disastrous to ask for the boons from it. Next. It is divided, the story is divided in three parts. First part, second part, and third part. The first part itself, whatever kind of atmosphere prevails there, It's dark and stormy night, and the roads are deserted. It's suggestive of something disastrous. Something worst is going to take place. They are playing chase. Mr. White and his son, Abbott, they are playing chase. But at the same time, Mr. White complains about the terrible weather and nearly deserted road they live near. He counts the disadvantages of living away from the city because whenever somebody has to come, if the house is far away from the city, that creates a problem. That shows that somebody is likely to arrive you and they are waiting. That person see here and the picture you see. Next, now what happens when the conversation is going on about the chase, Jake and mate internally in mind? Uh, Mr. White is waiting for. Sergeant Major Morris, when he arrives, when somebody comes to home, we usually offer hospitality. And as far as British people are concerned, without whiskey or rum, the hospitality is never complete. So therefore, Mr. White, who is very happy for the ar arrival of Sergeant Major, he offers him whiskey. And then Sergeant starts telling Mr. White the stories of his bravery, of his exploits in India. Sergeant was in India for some time and now he has gone back to his own country, but now he's narrating the stories of his bravery, his exploits in India. For him, those are the kinds of nostalgic memories. When the conversation goes on, what happens? During the conversation, Mr. Morris takes out a small mummified ball out of his pocket. What's, what's that for? You will ask the question in the examination. Tell something about the paw. Or what did surgeon tell Mr. White about the paw? So that paw is a small one in size. It is mummified. Mummified means it is fade with some kind of material so that it lasts long. That is called mummified. So that paw is very small. It is mummified. And it was given to Mr. Sergeant by a fakir. In India, we know the word fakir very well. In English, it is called a mystic miracle worker. 
So this power was given to the sergeant by a fakir in India. He shows that power to the white family. He also tells that the paw has the power to grant three wishes. It has the power. It has got magical power. If you ask for something, <clears throat> it will provide immediate, like uh, we have that Aladdin's Chirag. Aladdin, you know, Aladdin Chirag was able to grant any wish. Whatever he asked for, he'll think. The same way, this Paul also has got that magical power to grant three wishes, three boons. It will fulfill three boons. Three boons asked for by the person who holds the power. But at the same time, that paw is also there to suggest that our lives, human lives, are controlled by the fate, not by magic. Next. Now again, something further about the paw. That certain tales the white. That This paw was earlier used by three men. According to Sergeant Major, three men can wish on the paw three times each, and two had already used. And the second person was Sergeant, Sergeant Morris. The Sergeant Major himself has already had the three wishes granted by the paw. But now, as the greed increases in the mind of the white family, Major does not fail to tell them that this boy is of no use. Now, it is not even syllable. It is because people will not believe in its power. They don't trust it. No one will buy the paw without first seeing the proof of its effect. And showing the proof was difficult because unless somebody holds it and wishes for it, request it for the grant of the boom, nobody would trust that. And it would it could grant the boons only to three persons, not more than three. So looking for the third person would buy the paw would be a difficult thing because it will be difficult for Mr. Sergeant to prove the power of the paw. And therefore, Sergeant tells them that this paw is useless and he throws it into the fire. You know, in England, every house has a fireplace because it's very cold there. So in order to fight cold, they have got a fireplace. Nowadays, there are no fireplaces as such. Now we have heaters. But in those days, the story of 1902, he throws it into the fire. Now, as the journey of the paw begins from the hand, surgeon to the fire, the greed in the mind of Mr. White is awakened and he jumps and catches hold of the paw which was likely to fall into his greed has motivated him, provoked him to hold the paw. He wanted to have the paw. The surgeon major throws the paw into the fire and Mr. White quickly rescues it. But 
as soon as the paw goes into the hands of Mr. White, the sergeant, the military man, tells Mr. White that this is not good. It will be useless for him to keep the paw. He should not try it. Next. And he also explained to him how to make a wish. Next. Now, as soon as the paw is in the hands of Mr. White, the greed in every member of the White family starts taking place, gets infected. Mrs. White says it's something like Arabian Nights. Arabian Nights are magic shows. And now she wants her husband to wish some domestic help for her because she is not able to work. Question arises, why? Why does Mrs. White feel something like Arabian Nights about the poor? Because Arabian Nights is a magic show. And the poor also has that magic power, magical power. So her first wish is that her husband should help her with some domestic help. So that she is able to work properly. Sergeant does not like this joke. It's a poor joke for him. He urges, he appeals to Mr. White to use common sense. If he insists on wishing. Now, after explaining to Mr. White how to use the paw for getting the wishes granted, they have supper, they take dinner, they have different matters to discuss, they have long discussion on different things. After supper and more tales of India, the certain major leaves. He goes home. Now, Herbert who is the son of Mr. and Mrs. White. Herbert says he thinks the Sergeant Major is full of nonsense and jokes that his father should make himself an emperor so that he does not have to listen to Mrs. White's nagging. A desire arises in his mind that he should become emperor so that he does not how to follow the orders of his mother. He does not want his mother to rule him. And therefore, he wants to become an emperor. Now, it's a kind of joke and that angers Mrs. White. And she runs after Madam, next. Mr. White says he has everything he wants and isn't. So what exactly should we wish for? Herbert says that 200 pounds would enable them to pay off the money owed for the house. So what was the first wish of Herbert that he expressed. His first wish was that he should become the emperor. But that was not such a serious wish. Now comes the real wish. He says that Mr. White, his father, would ask for 200 pounds from the poor. 
so that whatever loan they have taken for the house they would be able to pay back the first wish that is seriously expressed by herbert is that they should have 200 pounds from the poor what do what do they need 200 pounds for to pay off the loan that they have taken for the house mr white wishes allowed for 200 pounds as herbert accompanies him with melodramatic chords played on the piano the boy skipped at one particular place and mr white prays for 200 pounds from the poor at that time albert is also there mr white suddenly cries out and says that the poor moved like a snake in his hand what happens when mr white asks for 200 pounds from the poor there is a strange movement the boss keep on moving to emit out its magical power it moves like a snake some very strange movement takes place there like some snake Captain Stan misses white boot wait Herbert sits by the fire and see the vividly realistic Mooty face in the flames. Then they go to sleep. Herbert puts off the fire, takes the monkey's paw and goes to bed. What next? Madam Clerk, this is part two now. Ah. Uh-huh. This is part two. Yeah. Yeah, this one, right? Now this is the part two. First part is over. What is the first part? Very simple. It is a stormy night. It's very cool outside. Extreme cold is there. the atmosphere itself is suggesting something evil that something evil is going to happen mr Her- mr white and herbert pages the friend that is sergeant major comes to the white family he tells them about the paw and its magical effect its magical powers Mr. White now has the paw in his hand. After the departure of the sergeant, the White family wishes for two hundred pounds from the paw. After expressing the there is a very strange movement in the form it's like some snake after that they go to howard now next morning what happens it's a sunny winter morning the atmosphere is very cheerful the earlier i mean evening atmosphere was was rather it was bad weather it was stormy night but here the atmosphere seems cheerful now herbert has to go to his office mrs white comments on how ridiculous the sergeant 
major story was about remarks that 200 pound student do any harm they could harbor jokes if the money fell out of the sky onto his father said mr white answers that people often mistake coincidence for granted shit harbor dean lives for work now harbor is not them mr white and mrs white are at home we already i already told you that whenever something is not destined to be given to us when it is not provided to us by the providence if we grab something which is not in our lot it will always give us some kind of sorrows or unhappiness it will bring some kind of disaster to us this story also focuses on this theme only now see what happens they had asked for 200 pounds that night they did not get anything but then of course we have seen that the boy had make some kind of very unusual moments like some thing now they laugh at the surgeon but leaves for his office after some time a man from the company of hubert comes to the house of mr white he knocks at the door mr white opens the door and he has brought very bad news he has come with a very bad news he tells mr white that herbert met with an accident in the factory and now he is no more he has been killed in the accident he was he he was into pieces and as a compensation the company has given 200 pounds to mr white so herbert is no more the son is no more the son of mr and mrs white is no more he met with a deadly accident and he died as a compensation the company has sent 200 pounds to mr white see earlier what was told that whenever you get something from the poor it will always be tagged with some kind of unhappy or sorrowful incident here herbert is no more he was lying in pieces and as a compensation mr white gets 200 and so 200 pounds for a moment mrs white feels relieved that herbert feels no pain because he is dead the representative says that herbert was caught in machinery and he has met his death next next now this is part 3 now herbert is no more in part 3 the whites bury herbert inside the grave several days pass the couple is 
very much in deep sorrow. The couple is exhausted. They are hopeless because they have lost their son. They have realized that asking for the fulfillment of the wish from the paw with its magical powers has proved disastrous for them. And then, then profound sorrow at the loss of their son. A week after the burial, Mr. White wakes up and hears his wife crying by the window. He is in profound sorrow, deep sorrow because she has lost her son. Every moment her son appears before eyes. Now, the second boon she wants to ask from the paw. She says to Mr. White, please ask the paw to bring back my son. I want Herbert back at any cost. I must get my son back. That is the second wish. What was the first wish, you know? The first wish was to get two 200 pounds from the poor. That wish was fulfilled. But what had followed the fulfillment of that wish? The death, the tragic death of Herbert. I mean, for the sake of 200 pounds, the family had to sacrifice its own son. The profit was small and the loss was huge. That is the result of the thing. Because those 200 pounds were not in their faith. But they had drawn it somehow with magical powers from the form. And therefore, they had to lose their son. It was a huge loss for them. Now, Mrs. White wants her son back. Now here it's a, it's a challenge to nature. Once a person is dead, cannot come back. But still, it's the mother's law. The mother wants her son back. And they have got something which can fulfill their wish. And that's Paul. Mr. White is not favorable. He does not want to do it because he has already explained that if a boon is granted by the pump, something again disastrous will happen. They will have to suffer a lot. It will cause a lot of sufferings. But she is his wife. She is insistent about getting her son back. And Mr. White becomes helpless. He again prays to the poor and asks for the return of his son from the grave. In fact, they themselves had buried him in the grave. But now, they want him back. They want to reclaim him. Alive. This is against the natural law. But since the mother was insisting, Mr. White prays to the poor to fulfill 
their wish of having their son back from the grave. And after some time, what happens? In fact, his body was mangled. His body was into pieces. He was not in recognizable shape. The grave gates open and whatever condition he was laid down there in pieces joined together in a mingled form he appears at the door. Hubbard comes back in that form very dreadful form horrible form that Herbert knocks at the door three times. And Mr. White opens the door to see his son like that. He sees the mangled body of his son. And he is He is profoundly, is in profound grief on seeing his son like that. The shape of his son, he cannot tolerate. The sight is very dreadful. And therefore he closes the door and shuts, shuts it from inside. He starts trembling. His whole body is trembling. But outside, from the outside, the body keeps on knocking the door, saying, I am Herbert, I am Herbert, I am Herbert. Open the door. Now, when Mrs. White hears these words, she wants to open the door because she feels that her son has come back. She tries to open the door, but it takes her some time. By that time, the third wish is chanted by Mr. White. Now imagine what that third wish was. Mrs. White opens the door and sees nobody there. There's nobody. So what was the third wish? The third wish was that Herbert must go back to his grave. And the paw grants that boon also. So the first wish was for 200 pounds. The second wish was for the return of Herbert from the grave. And the third wish was that Herbert should go back to grave. And here the story ends. Now, what do we learn from this story? What message we get? Here she is uh, trying to open the door. What message we get? Whatever is destined to us, that will certainly get. Whatever we earn by the sweat of our brow, we will get. But if something which is not given to us by fate will always bring some kind of disaster to us. This moral law operates in this universe. And nobody can challenge this moral law. There's a divine law in this universe. And that the things will always occur according to that divine law. And whenever the divine law is broken, the effect is, the result is very disastrous. 
we should earn what we want we should not grab it from others we should not forcibly we should not take it forcibly from others asking something be of cost from me tilag of aladdin maybe the monkey's paw will always be followed by some kind of grief some kind of sorrow so this is the philosophy of life that we must earn something we must earn something with our efforts then only the god will grant us it uh, with happiness but if we if we forcibly take it from somebody else or by the power of some magic it will be always disastrous it will end in sorrow story was very popular in those days and even today it's very popular and we learn a lot in things from the story i hope you understood story and then i have taken out certain questions we have to emphasize on personal response questions which have been introduced in your course in your syllabus the questions are like this what did what is the deep part of summary of monkey's paw that deed will always end in disaster whatever we get by the sweat of our brow will always be with us but anything that we get by way of some magic power supernatural power it will never be with us we must follow the moral universal divine law that operates in this void monkey's paw monkey's paw symbolizes greed and disaster what are some examples of foreshadowing in the monkey's paw that atmosphere in the night that is stormy cool deserted these are the examples which tell us that something evil is going to take place there are so many questions here what is mr white's third wish first wish second wish third wish the first wish was having 200 pounds second wish reclaiming herbert from the grave and the third wish return of herbert to the grave what is sergeant mon the white about the powers of the paw he wants them that whatever you boon you ask for will always be followed by some kind of loss or sorrow or sufferings they are already warned not to have the paw and not to have their boon granted from the paw where is the conflict where is the conflict here the conflict is between having the boons granted and not having the boons granted after the first boon was granted mr white was always struggling in his mind whether to use the paw or not 
that that conflict is certainly there next 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 madam Hi. you people can take the screenshot of this questions what conversation was going on between mr mr and mrs white that night before sergeant major morris arrived what they were talking about they were talking about their house being far away from the town the night was very cold and they were waiting for the sergeant and mr white says that uh herbert says that might be he won't come at all how did mr white welcome sergeant major morris he makes him comfortable he offers him whiskey he offers him supper also what did what did sergeant major morris tell the whites about the monk's paw that we already seen that this boy has got magical powers it can grant boons to three persons only the first person had asked for death the second was the sergeant himself and the third person was mr white but the sergeant had told him not to use the paw as using it would be disastrous <clears throat> why did sergeant major morris tell sorry uh, why did sergeant morris think that the monkey's paw would not be sold no nobody would buy the monkey's paw simply because before buying the person would like to have its power tested which was not possible nobody would believe in the magical power of the paws and the paw he thought that it won't be sold why did sergeant major morris throw the monkey's paw upon the fire because he thought that it was useless since it won't be bought by anybody as proving its power magical power was still difficult why do you think mr white caught hold of the monkey's paw as it was like it fall into the fire that's a postal response question it is so because when he had heard stories when mr white had heard stories about the paw the greed arose in his mind and he wanted to earn something from the paw to get his wishes fulfilled from the paw and therefore out of greed he held the paw in his hand when it was like it fall into the fire why do you think mrs white said that it sounded like the arabian nights hello sir hello hello i think sir has lost connectivity we'll join in a minute
सर कनेक्टिविटी गेली का तुमची ओके यू जॉइन ओके ओके हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई फील सर हैज लॉस्ट कनेक्टिविटी बट आई थिंक वी वर डीलिंग विद द क्वेश्चंस ही हैज ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन द स्टोरी वेरी मच इन डिटेल एंड आई थिंक यू ऑल मस्ट हैव एंजॉयड इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस इफ यू वांट एनी क्वेश्चंस टू बी आंसर्ड बाय सर यू कैन जस्ट राइट इट इन योर यूट्यूब चैट and we'll be discussing it with sir and he'll be answering and you'll get the answer in your upcoming sessions or you can just email it to me so that you'll get your answers this was a fantastic story about greed and do you think that uh, such things really happen these are all personal response questions which might be asked whether really you believe in fate do you believe in fate such a question can be asked whether you really believe in fate you can just write one or two uh, answers in your chat whether you really believe in fate and if you are greedy what can happen what are the things really people do because of greed and uh, what did you really enjoy from this story yes if you can write uh, uh, something related to this in the chat we'll be able to discuss yes yes i'll just just go through the chat and see if somebody is writing yes so do you first of all uh, children just tell me whether you believe that uh, you believe in fate do you believe that uh everything is destined and you cannot go beyond whatever is destined in your life if something is bound to happen it will happen and you cannot change your fate do you think this is possible yes please write in the chat aapko aise lagta hai kyunki hamare kismat mein jo bhi kuch likha hai wahi hota hai aur hum या हमारे हाथों में है हमारी जिंदगी को लिखना हमारी जिंदगी को हमें जैसे भी प्लान करना है क्या हम प्लान कर सकते हैं या जो हमारे फेट में लिखा हुआ है जो हमारे डेस्टी में डेस्टिनी में लिखा हुआ है वही होता है या कुछ हमारे भी हाथों में होता है प्लीज राइट इन द चैट यस डू यू बिलीव इन फेट यस खुशी इज राइटिंग नो आई डोंट थिंक सो Yes. तो लोगों को लगता है कि ऐसा कुछ होता नहीं है फेट वगैरह कुछ नहीं है अगर हम मेहनत करें तो हम हमारा नसीब भी बदल सकते हैं डू यू बिलीव इन दिस सोनाली वर्मा इज सेंग यस एंड रेवती बोकाड़े सिंह नो मैम हमारे हाथों में ही है ये सारी चीजें कुछ लोग बोल विनीत चौधरी सिंह डेफिनेटली सो यस and do you think that because of greed people do so many things kuch aise bataiye ki aap greed ya log kya karte hain jo log greedy hote hain wo kisi bhi had tak ja sakte hain paison ke liye bhi kisi bhi had tak ja sakte hain do you feel that greed can really lead you to um, dangers or you feel that no just because people are like what what can you say about greed yes what can you say about greed please write uh, your opinion yes somebody vinit choudhary is saying career is in our hand and death is not in our hands yes so do you feel not only death but do you think other things are also in our hand do you believe that other things are in our hand do you believe this yes you should have such discussions go beyond the text you know and think on such questions whether you really really believe in fate whether such things can happen and if a person who has died if that if 
a very near and dear person who has really uh, who has died and if that person comes to life what will happen to you yes would you really accept him or you'll be scared of him yes yes if such a thing happens if a person has died a person who is very near and dear to you and if that person comes back to life what will happen will you really enjoy his company would you welcome him or you'll be scared just think yes here people are writing i know uh, on facebook there is a time lag of 10 seconds and people are writing on greed if uh, students are writing yes many people have written on greed that greed is most dangerous thing that a man should never have greedy people do not understand the difference between good and bad yes and greed might lead you to trouble yes very good and what about the last question which i asked yes that if a person was very near and dear to you and if that person has died and if that person comes back to life what will happen <laughs> somebody has written yes kushi has written we we'll, we will obviously be scared yes dar lagega hmm or you, you won't be happy if that person comes back to life yes you some people have written we'll be shocked yes you'll be happy you will you accept that person so okay all these were the questions and sir has dealt with all the questions uh he has talked about all these questions and he for you he has uh, like uh, penned so many questions so you can just go through the questions and prepare yourself for your for the examination and i would like to thank uh, dr pravin Josh joshi for dealing with this lesson in depth and talking about each and everything in detail we lost connectivity but sir we definitely enjoyed the session with you thank you very much and uh, friends tomorrow is saturday and then sunday so we are not going to have any sessions on saturday and sunday but definitely we'll be back on monday with another interesting session with dr sujata chakravarti so till then goodbye and happy learning